Chapter 8, Jennifer. School was over, and the following year, my sister Holly was enrolled at the Indian boarding school along with my brother Henry. Henry had come back to Red River with so many stories of the city. Places were open 24 hours a day. You could eat fries at 2 in the morning. Awesome! I could not wait for high school to start for me. During the time that I went to town for school, my dad had moved into my grandma's four-bedroom house. This move was to help the expansion of his sports fishing lodge. So when we returned, it was to a new house. So big for us, I thought. <clears throat> but I did get my own room. The new house is near the dump, and in the fall, many bears hit the dump to fatten up for their winter sleep. Bears have a big circle of food that they keep doing all summer. Depending how big their circle was, we seen most bears every seven to ten days. Bears have a good memory for easy getting food. The dump was everyone's favorite. When the locals would dump in bear season, they pulled up and honked a couple of times, waited for the bears to go in the brushes, bushes, then get out, dump and get back in and drive off. From my bedroom window, you could see all this happen. When someone said there was a bear in the village, I always went home. I'm not about to find out if they were full or hungry. To this day, I was going the other direction of these massive animals. When I had graduated the eighth grade, my dad had talked to me about how life was when we were an adult. He had stated that kids played with dolls and boats. I was growing to an adult, he stated, and therefore I was to put down these kid games. My dad said that my childhood name, Jenny, was to be no more. My adult name was Jennifer, and I was to tell everyone. My life just felt different after that conversation, an adult. Throughout that summer, my dad had taken the time to explain in great detail all the questions I had about becoming an adult. <clears throat> in the fall was the time my brother Henry and I would go to a place called the Summon Hole to get giant wood logs for our winter supply of firewood. My grandma's foyer could hold at least five cords of wood. Red cedar and yellow cedar were used for kindling. My dad would watch for the fine weather to go to the Summon Hole because we had to go out to the ocean and travel for about 10 minutes on the open water for the perfect spot to pull logs off the beach. Baseball sized rocks led to a steep drop off into the ocean, perfect to get the skiff right on the beach. My sister Holly came with us a couple of times. The first day my sister Holly and I planned on swimming in the ocean, we had our village swimwear, shorts and a t-shirt. Ready and heading for the water, my brother states as we near the water that he wouldn't swim there because of the sea lions. Sea lions? We did not think of that at all. No swimming for us. We would take about three days to collect wood logs to drag back to the village. Then the work would begin for the rest of us. At the beach, the men would cut up the logs into sections to bring to the house when it got to the house, they started to chop it up and made a pile of wood perfect for kindling. That was my job. I was set up with a small stool and a chopping block. My brother showed me how to chop up these boards for kindling. Hours and hours turned into days of chopping kindling. The foyer would fill up with this regular chopped wood and right in front was my hard work on display. A wall of kindling. The house smelled so good, red cedar and yellow cedar. We had two houses and one barn to burn all through the winter. Hot, cold, and visions of warm fire went through my head every year. <clears throat>